Okay, Bill Butler here. Um, so I'm going to do my best to explain what BitShares is and um, talk a little bit about it in the crypto ecosystem. And I'm also going to try to explain how to set up uh, your BitShares account. This is BitShares 2.0, not 1.0. Um, so BitShares is a crypto currency, um, but it's a lot more than, than that. It's actually a uh, um, it can be used as collateral to uh, secure positions in derivatives. Uh, when I say derivatives, I mean uh, like U.S. dollar, gold, silver. So <clears throat> BitShares is uh, kind of like the underlying um, asset that secures uh, positions. And I know that all sounds a little uh, daunting, but if you stick with me, you'll start to understand if I can explain it properly why it's why it's important um, so <clears throat> it, in the past depending on your uh, depending on how much you've dealt with cryptocurrencies you've maybe bought some Bitcoin and then you've maybe gone to an exchange like Poloniex or Beter or any of these others and you've taken that Bitcoin and you've exchanged it for other currencies and one of the downsides to that is that you're still relying on these exchanges to be in business, to be trustworthy with your dollars while they're there. BitShares takes that and it act, and they've turned the exchange into a distributed entity as well. So there is no one central authority that's sort of holding on to your money um, as you're trading things. And, and so they've also come up with a, a really innovative way to essentially peg um, uh, the U.S. dollar and peg gold and silver and um, even even Bitcoin. For instance, you could own a Bitcoin derivative on the BitShares exchange. So <clears throat> it's it's pretty powerful. And until you see it, uh, it takes a little bit for it to soak in. But I I'm it's worth it's worth it. Uh, their latest incarnation, BitShares 2.0, <clears throat> is actually. Um, much more powerful than 1.0. Uh, 1.0 was extremely frustrating. I went through it. Everybody went through it uh, who was involved with BitShares, and they realized that they had a fundamental flaw in how they um, in how they handled uh, transactions. It essentially got more and more difficult uh, to keep your wallet in sync. Um, there were times when I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to. This latest wallet. They've engineered it, uh, at least from the PR side of things, to you know scale to 100 transactions per second, which is <clears throat> far above what uh, uh, what the Nasdaq, I believe, is even capable of right now. So obviously, it hasn't been stressed even close close to that. Uh, BitShares is probably suffering a little bit from reputation and lack of liquidity to um, to um, really uh, gain, but <clears throat> it's only been a week and a half, two weeks since they released the latest. So I would encourage you to uh, set up an account, and I'm, I plan to walk you through how to set up that account now. Um, so I'm just kind of looking at my notes here. So basically, they have two wallets. I'm going to go over the online wallet, and I like the online wallet because there really aren't any security negatives to it. <laughs> they do store the, the keys in the browser locally, but they're also the keys are encrypted as well. So, uh, Let's go to the wallet. <clears throat> um, if you click the link uh, on this article, um, that will take you to the uh, openledger.info wallet, which is sort of the official uh, BitShares wallet. And uh, I've also put a referral code in for me so that um, I will earn uh, fees um, fr from your registration and that sort of thing. I, I would appreciate it if you click on that. If uh, Either way, your fees cost the same. You're not paying a premium uh, for that. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just walk through this. So this is this is the wallet. You can do some things here without even um, needing to register. Uh, you can actually explore. Um, you can see the blockchain. Um, you can look at transactions that are going on. But we're just going to go ahead and create an account. So I'm going to create a generic one uh, just for. Um, I will just call it Music Dash City. And then the password, I'd recommend a very long password, greater than 10 characters. Um, you could take two of your passwords that you've used in other situations, and you could pair them together. Um, you know, you could do whatever, but don't make it a password that you use for other things. You, you make it something unique, maybe something you use for crypto, or, or if you have a, 
uh, you know, a, a program, one pass, you know, that, that works with your computer, then let it auto-generate one for you and, uh, you know, and, and lock it away. So let's see, I'm going to make one here. Okay, let's try that. All right, and then create account. Okay, so once we've created an account, <clears throat> we don't have any balance. Um, they actually use a faucet, and I think that faucet, um, there you go. It, okay, so this is my account, and um, it could take a minute to sort of catch up on the first registration. So don't be surprised if some of these things don't come up immediately. Um, but now the, the safest thing to do is to go ahead and back up your wallet. So let's click down here on uh, backup required and we are going to back up our wallet okay now we will back up our wallet all we have to do is click download and it will create a BTS default wallet I already did it once so you see a, a one in there and that is going to put it into your downloads folder on your local computer I'd recommend that you move it from there into you know possibly some place that um, you could, it, it is encrypted already, but you could um, take it and put it into um, you know, encrypt it inside a zip archive and put it on Dropbox or um, or in Google Drive or you know someplace. Maybe just on a USB key uh, of your own and tuck it away somewhere because that wallet is the key to whatever funds you have you know sitting sitting in this browser. And it's possible at one time or another you will reset the cache on this browser. And if you do that, then you are you will likely need to restore um, your wallet. So now that we've we've backed this up, we could we can safely put some funds onto it. So if you have um, Bitcoin somewhere in an exchange or in Coinbase, uh, you have the option to go to the de deposit withdraw, um, and you can actually deposit to this Bitcoin account, and it will submit uh, it will put dollars into a, a essentially a Bitcoin derivative account within um, uh, within BitShares you can do the same thing here with this block trades, block trades account so you can experiment with who's going to give you the best rate between these two you can do the same thing if you have Litecoin or Doge or whatever um, you can deposit and they will show up in these derivative accounts within BitShares. So now you can kind of start to see the power of BitShares. Um, all of a sudden, uh, you've just moved money into your own personal exchange. And um, and so <clears throat> what's interesting to get your mind wrapped around is that you don't own BitShares. I'm sorry, you don't own uh, Bitcoin, but you own a derivative of Bitcoin that that tracks Bitcoin. One of the things I like about BitShares so much is that it addresses, especially in the context of BitUS dollar, it addresses a lot of the concerns that people have um, about being able to maintain the value of the currency. So Bitcoin is great because it's reasonably fast moving money from A to B and it's it's peer to peer. But one of the problems with Bitcoin is that it it fluctuates in value and so if you're a business you really want to price things in dollars because you're buying things in dollars you may be buying your food from your vendor and you may be um, and you're selling to your customers in dollars so you know it's it's bad if you uh, take uh, um, one Bitcoin for a really nice meal at a high-end restaurant for three hundred dollars and then um, and then that same Bitcoin tomorrow is worth two hundred and eighty you know you've just lost twenty dollars on your meal uh, and you really so you've got to pay your vendor and you would have essentially less money to pay your vendor with. So BitShares addresses this by having a tracking currency, um, by being able to have the U.S. dollar be a derivative. All of a sudden, someone could pay you in bit U.S. dollars and you could turn around and um, pay your vendor in either U.S. dollars or bit U.S. dollars and you wouldn't lose any money. But you still have the advantage of the speed of that payment. Um, but we go a step further with the speed with BitShares because um, BitShares used to uh, 
But we go a step further um, with BitShares because BitShares actually can clear a transaction in three to five seconds. And Bitcoin takes, you know, 20, 30 minutes. So all of a sudden we've got a platform that holds value with the U.S. dollar and allows near instantaneous um, uh, transactions. They were also had quite a bit of forethought here because they want the transactions to be fast but not too fast. The negatives with doing the transaction as quickly as possible um, are those same things that are associated with the NASDAQ. Um, you've probably heard of the guys that, you know, they put the fiber really close to the NASDAQ so that they could get advantages uh, of milliseconds, microseconds on the exchange. Um, and what the, the BitShares folks said was, well, let's let's make it two or three seconds, you know, for the transactions. Let's not make it um, milliseconds. And in, in that way, nobody can really game the system by by you know being closer or by having an unfair advantage so uh, that's that's kind of a cool thing too so so at this point um, I didn't send anything into this account but I have done it before and it, it works great um, so all you have to do is go to coinbase and if you don't have a coinbase account there's another link in this article you can click on that and um, that will allow you to connect coinbase to your bank account just like um, uh, you know, just like you do with PayPal or Dwala or any of, the, any of those things, and then you'd be able to, you'll be able to transfer, you know, say 50 bucks, 100 bucks into Coinbase. That will take um, a little bit of time. Usually, there's three or four days on that, and then you can go from Coinbase to here, and then from here on out, you pretty much have your money in your own private uh, exchange uh, with all your markets. And so here you can see you have gold to BitShares the euro to bit shares, US dollar to bit shares, um, <clears throat> you know, your Bitcoin to bit shares. Uh, these are two different Bitcoin um, uh, markets. Silver to bit shares, the yen to bit shares, and then, um, and then the US dollar to bit shares. So you could bring in bit shares and then you could buy US dollars with that and you could hold uh, US dollars and you can trade in, in interesting uh, creative ways as well. So that concludes uh, this video, and I hope it's helped. And um, as I learn more, you know, I'll probably add some more videos and talk about uh, interesting ways to um, to handle uh, short trades and um, uh, and uh, you know tr try to make a little bit of money on the market as well.